117. <clears throat> Sketch the solid bounded by this cylinder, this plane, and this plane. We're asked to sketch it and then calculate the volume. Okay? So we've got a couple of different surfaces and regions and things going on here. Just remember, cylinder, plane, constant plane, non-constant plane. Okay, and in particular, this is a cylinder wrapped around, oh, this is a cylinder wrapped around the Z axis, so it's a vertical cylinder. So let's have a look at that one. Now, have you guys done cylindrical coordinates yet in lectures? Yes? Okay, well, you could do this question using cylindricals. I'm not going to do it um, that way because um, this is like an introductory uh, tutorial on these things. But <clears throat> see if you can do this one using cylindricals if you're, if you're familiar with them. Anyway, let's sketch the region first. So this is 117. All right. So I'm going to say uh, our, our region is, say, omega. The solid bounded by this cylinder, this plane, constant plane, and this non-constant plane. Okay, let's draw the, the solid of interest. Well, here you've got this cylinder and this plane below. So um, I'm going to draw that in. Okay, let's say that's one. And so think of this as the intersection of the, this cylinder with the plane Z equals 1. Now, how do I account for this? Well, as X and Y both get positive, this is going to, get, it's going to decrease, right? So in the first quadrant, this is going to sort of be sloping down towards that first quadrant. So the way I'm going to represent that is something like this. And then we're going to join them up. Okay, it's not a perfect drawing. That's it, that, that, that's so, so think of this this sort of sl slice slanting down towards the xy sort of uh, the, the positive or non-negative xy sort of quadrant. Okay. Now, when x and y are both zero, this is just nine, so you can sort of intersect it there. Okay, not a perfect picture, but not bad. Now, one important um, piece of information with these kinds of problems is to look at the projection of the solid on the XY plane. Okay? <clears throat> so this is my solid, and this is sort of like the projection of the solid. What point in the xy plane does the solid lie above? OK, well, that's kind of a reasonable sketch. Let's actually compute the triple integral. So we know the following. The volume, oops, the volume of omega is just the triple integral over the solid itself of 1. OK, so how are we going to describe my region omega in terms of x, y, and z in Cartesians? Well, 
<clears throat> I'm going to do this all in one step. What are the surfaces that bound Z? Well, it's bounded below by the surface 1, the constant surface, and it's bounded above by this surface. Okay, so... Well, what about <clears throat> X and Y? Well, let's draw the projection in the XY plane. So it's going to cut at 2 and 2. Now, if I want to, say, put this all in Cartesians, I know that x is going to be between... Well, let's just draw a vertical line. So this is <coughs> y equals minus root 4 minus x squared. That's the bottom half, and this is the top half. Okay? So if I wanted to put two functions that bound y, well, the top one would be four minus x, root 4 minus x squared, and the bottom one would be root minus root 4 minus x squared. dy. What about z? Who can give me the z? Oh, sorry, the x, the x bounds. Well, let's just slide this around. If I slide this around... What's, what am I going to be between? I'm going to be between minus 2 and 2. Okay? Now, just looking at integral, it's not very nice. So what I'm going to do is do the inside integral first and then switch to polars. Okay? But the, the only reason I did uh, I describe this is just so you have a, a good understanding of the, the sort of... Cartesian um, setup. So let, let's do the inside integral first. I integrate z, uh, 1 with respect to z. I'm going to get 9 minus 3x minus 2y minus 1. Okay, so when I take one away from the other, I'll get 8 minus 3x minus 2y to y dx. Okay, so now let's switch to polars, okay? Ho hopefully you can see that, well, okay, we could have started with cylindrical coordinates, but um, we're going to have to switch to, well, we want to switch to polars down here. So, let's describe this region in terms of polars. What's it going to be? Well, r is going to be between 0 and 2, and what's theta going to be between? The angle. 0 and 2 pi, right. So, so, this is going to be 8. So, we replace x with r cos theta and y with r sine theta. And we replace this area element with r dr d theta. Okay? Now, don't forget about the R here. Lots of students forget it. <clears throat> so let's, again, do the inside integral first and then outside integral. So when I multiply through here, I'm going to get 8R. When I integrate that, I'm going to get 4R squared. Over here, I'm, I'm going to get 3R squared. So I'm going to get um, R cubed. And over here, I'm going to get 2r squared. When I integrate it, it will be 2r cubed on 3. OK, so all I need to do now is plug in my r's. So when I plug in r equals 0, everything's going to be 0. So that's, that's not a problem. First term is going to give me 16. 
minus 8 cosine theta. Uh, I'm going to get 16 on 3. Sine theta. Okay, so now I just those a little bit with respect to theta. Okay, so I won't do that last one because I'm running out of space. But if you do those those three integrals and sub in two pi and zero, you'll get thirty-two pi. Now, it is a volume, so I'm just going to write it thirty-two pi cubic units. <clears throat> Now, you, you, we did a, a set this up in Cartesian. Hopefully you can see how you could have sort of eliminated a lot of this work just by using um, cylindricals. Now, you may not be too comfortable with cylindricals yet. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do a real simple example in cylindricals a bit later if we, if we have time. Questions? <coughs> 